All right. Oh, <laughs> start me there. What's going on, guys? Everybody doing amazing today? Good. That's what I like to hear. But I'm really glad you're here because I got a great episode for you today. I'm going to be going over some fragrances that some might say are only good for the spring and summer. Though all these fragrances are great in the heat, I like to wear them in the cold. I like to call these the rule-breaking fragrances. I've got seven fragrances to go over with you, so stay tuned if you want to know what fragrances I like to rock in the winter that bust through the seasonal barriers. Cue that intro. What's going on, my beautiful fragrance family, and welcome back to my two cents. My name is Brian and this is the show all about boosting your confidence through the art of fragrance and becoming a lasting scent memory. God, look at this beautiful fragrance family. You guys are looking freaking amazing today. Yes, I know I can't see you, but uh, I'm sure you're looking great and I know if you're on this channel, you're definitely smelling great. If you're new to this channel and you want to know how to smell great and you like fragrance related content, then do me a quick favor and join this fragrance family by hitting that subscribe button down below. While you're down there, hit that notification bell so that you stay in the know every time I'm posting new content. Throw me up some of those likes, guys, because it helps me get my two cents out there. And uh, yeah, don't forget to drop me some comments down below. What are some fragrances that you like to wear that break the rules? They punch seasons right in the face. Let me know. Drop me a comment down below. Fragrances don't know when they want to be worn. Fragrances, they're like, I just want to be sprayed. Wear me. I want to be worn. I know that certain fragrances are geared more towards spring and summer. And a lot of these are. But there's notes in these fragrances that really pop. They come alive in the colder weather. And that's why I love wearing some of these fragrances. So now it's time to get into those fragrances in today's Breaking the Law. Breaking the Law. Whiffs and snips. This is not a ranked list. This is just seven fragrances that I enjoy wearing pretty much all year round. Actually, all year round. I got some designers in here and I also have some niche. First up on the list is going to be a fragrance that I have worn longer than any other fragrance. It used to be my signature scent. And no, it's not Aqua de Jo. I know that's what everybody's thinking. But if you've been following his channel, you would know that it's going to be Izzy Miyake Lodisi Poro. I love this fragrance, and I always will love this fragrance. Some might say that it's really more geared for the spring and summer. It's got this really nice yuzu note. It's got some really nice citruses and some aromatics and a nice woody base. This fragrance has been around for a really long time. Almost as long as I've been around. No, no, because I'm old as dirt. But it's been around for a really long time. And the great thing about this fragrance is now I can spray this on again, and I'm not going to smell like everybody else. Because a lot of people don't talk about this bad boy anymore. But I do, and I love Lodisi Decepurum. This does shine in the spring and summer. It shines in the heat. But the yuzu that's in it, and a lot of the aromatics and the nice woodiness really come out, pop their head out when you wear it in the cold. Also, you get a little bit more spiciness from it. It's a really good fragrance, and I'll always wear this whenever the hell I want, because I freaking love it. And that's all that matters on the list. I'm watch. Sunshine Man. Sunshine Man is fantastic. This has got a lot of depth to it. It's great in the spring and summer because this is going to have some citrus, some rum, some clary sage, some lavender in it. What really shines for me with this fragrance in the cooler months is going to be the lavender and that rum. It gives it some depth, especially getting into the heart. But then once you get into the dry down, you get this really nice tonka. This nice sweet tonka, and then you're also going to get some cedar. And the cedar really morphs. It morphs. It comes out. It brightens up. It becomes a little bit more resinous. I really enjoy wearing this all year round. It's a fantastic fragrance for the spring and summer, but it's also a fantastic fragrance in the cold. You could also wear Beach Hut Man. There's enough depth with Beach Hut Man to be worn in the cooler months, but I've always been a sunshine man. Sunshine... Yep, that used to be my nickname back in the day. And it wasn't because of Sunshine Man. It's because I had long hair and I looked like one of the actors from a certain movie. Sunshine Man, fantastic all year round, in my opinion. Next up is a brand new one to 2021. I have started wearing this a little bit now that it's cooled down and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And it's Aqua de Jo, Profundo Lights. What I really like about this is what they did is they it's there's not as much of the Aqua de Jo DNA in it. It's there, but it's not as pronounced as it is in Profundo. Profumo. They did something very special here. Now there are aquatic notes. There is some sea notes to this. And then you're also going to have some clary sage, some nice aromatics. But what really shines in this is in the dry down. 
The dry down has a really nice spicy sweetness to it with some really nice warm woods and a little bit of patchouli. I think this is a banger in the cold. Even the aquatic notes, they kind of sit back a little bit. You get more of the aromatics and you get a lot more of the woodiness. A lot of the Aqua de Jolie line gets characterized as spring and summer, except for Fumo. This one, I think, is all year. All right, this next one has to be here because I, I love this fragrance so much. I couldn't just wear it in the spring and summer. And it's Zerjoff, 40 knots. I've had a lot of subscribers comment and say, hey man, I picked this up and they love it. That's freaking awesome. This is a phenomenal fragrance and I think can be worn any time of the year. 40 knots, it's an aquatic woody fragrance, but the woodiness, the woody dry down is where this shines in the cool months. There's some really nice creamy green notes that really pop. I really like the dry white woodiness at the base. It's like some driftwood, some oakiness, a little bit of cedar mixed in there. I think this is a phenomenal fragrance, especially in the cold, in the summer, hell, any time of the year. It's not only my favorite aquatic for the summer, it's also my favorite aquatic that sails through the winter. So this next one doesn't get a lot of love. In fact, it's a little bit of love and a little bit of hate. Some might say this is just a ugh, release of 2021, but I thoroughly enjoy this. And it's Hermes, H24. Who says you can't wear a soapy green metallic fragrance through the winter? I was actually talking to one of my subscribers who saw me do my review of this. I'll leave a card right here so you can go check it out. It was so long ago, even though it was only a few months ago. And he's like, I can't wait till next year to when I can wear this again. I start wearing it this week and uh, yeah, this is a great fragrance for the cooler months. In fact, I get better performance out of it. That's the crazy part. I like to consider this a fresh, soapy, green, slightly metallic, chili fragrance. It has this really nice cooling sclerine in it. And sclerine is a synthetic compound that is creates this kind of metallic feel. I get some clary sage in this, though I know it's not in the notes, but there's also some narcissus. And narcissus adds just kind of a little really nice aromatic greenness to it. But then also I get a little bit of like a screechy, not overly screechy, clary sage. And this actually in the spring and summer, you get more of that screechiness. In the cold, it, it's kind of not there. This is just a very, very soapy, fresh, clean fragrance with a nice woody base that actually works really well in the cooler months. I think this is a fantastic release of 2021. Why I think it gets a little bit of hate and a little bit of love, it's because it's not mass appealing, but it's really good. So there is one citrus note that I thoroughly enjoy wearing the most in the cool months because it's pretty much in every single fragrance. Well, not every single fragrance, but I'm over exaggerating there, but it's in a buttload of them. And the fragrance that I would wear in the cool months that garners one of the best bergamot notes comes from the house of Gallagher and it's bergamust. This is newer to my collection, but man, I've been rocking this this past week when it's been in the 40s, high has only been 45. This is a stunning fragrance in the cool months. The bergamot is bright and juicy and bitter, a little bit of sour, then it has this really nice orange blossom that gives it this kind of soapy, aromatic, and clean feel. But the big ingredient in this that really helps push and punch through the cold is the ambroxan. The ambroxan and cedar. Not only does the ambroxan help with longevity, because this is a long-lasting citrus, the bergamot lasts for freaking ever, at least two to three hours on my skin. And the orange blossom is also going to be there. It's quite linear, but when it fully dries down, that cedar and ambroxan really take hold and just becomes this beautiful fragrance. You get a nice sweetness that's actually coming from some, like, white musks. There's also like a resinous ambery feel through it as well. This would be a banger in the heat. And there's also a, a banger in the cold. Bergamust, it's a must. Last but not least, 100% aquatic fragrance, 100%. Though, again, I've been testing it out on the cold, it works. That's my Sony, Wave. Like, but Brian, it's called Wave. It, it's meant for the beach. It gets cold at the beach too. And there's waves in Antarctica. Though this is a very aquatic fragrance. And yes, it does really stinking good in the heat. But it does really well in the cold as well. The lavender that's in it, the lavender spikes, they really spike through the cold. There is a lot of citrus in it as well. 
but as it dries down, once you get into the heart notes, I start getting a few more notes than I normally would in the heat. I get more vetiver and I get some more vanilla. Now this is always going to be musky, no matter what season you're in, but the vanilla and vetiver really shine in the dry down. In the cold, I really didn't think I was going to enjoy it, but I really do. So last on my list, Missoni Wave. It's kind of blew my mind, to be honest with you. I like it. Look, I get it. Certain fragrances, they are meant to be worn in the heat. They are lighter. They're packed with a lot of ingredients that just don't work that well in the cold. But again, fragrances don't know seasons. They just want to be worn. And if you love rocking a fragrance and it boosts your confidence, it helps you become memorable, then that's all that matters. Wear whatever fragrance whenever the hell you want. If you love it, rock it. If it boosts your confidence, then definitely rock it. Don't matter. Wear what you love. So there it is, guys. Those are seven fragrances. Though they're geared for the summer and spring, I love rocking in the cold. Let me know what you think about my list. If you love it, you hate it, drop me a comment down below. And again, let me know what fragrances you like to rock that break the seasonal boundaries. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do me a favor. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember, you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails.